For our text tonight, I'd like to read one verse from 1 Corinthians, <coughs> excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Of course, this is a, an entire chapter about love. And the Apostle Paul concludes his uh, great treatise on that wonderful, wonderful attitude with this uh, very, very important passage. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three. But the greatest of these is love. Now I've wrestled with the reason that love is the greatest of these. I, I've, I've tried to think through that in my own uh, mind a number of times. And I wonder if it's not at this point. Faith is mainly a, a vertical relationship. We believe in God. We believe in Jesus Christ. We, we have that one-to-one -one relationship that, that goes uh, vertically. And for the most part, hope is like that too. Now, we can have hope in those round about us. We, we uh, can, can uh, have confidence and hope in those uh, uh, in our world. And yet ultimately, as we will see tonight in this lesson we're calling our Christian hope, it also is basically a vertical relationship uh, with God and with his promises and what the, the Lord has done for us. Now, love is, is different because it, if you think about it, partakes of both the vertical, that is, me and God, but also a horizontal relationship. There are probably about as many verses in the Bible or in the New Testament about loving others, loving our neighbors, loving our enemies, loving our brethren, that horizontal relationship of love, than there are those uh, of, the horizon, uh, of the vertical loving God. And so you have both of those going on with love, whereas with faith and hope, uh, uh, you have essentially just the two, uh, or just the one, that is the, the uh, vertical uh, to God and, and uh, with hope and believing uh, going to God. But I want to talk about hope tonight. Uh, I think uh, it is something that we need to continue to remind ourselves of. And uh, here in this passage, obviously, you have one of the uh, points along the way through the New Testament where the, the three great cornerstones... Uh, of uh, attitude uh, come to us, faith, hope, and love, that great trinity. But again, our focus is hope, and uh, the Greek word for hope is elpis, E-L-P-I-S. Uh, it occurs 53 times as a noun. In other words, we, we talk about our Christian hope, that's, that's a, a noun. 31 times it occurs as a verb, I, I hope this or I hope that. Uh, so uh, you're talking about uh, 84 different times in the New Testament, so it's quite a subject. We can't begin to talk about all of those passages tonight, but we hope to give you the, the essence of what they really are saying to us. It's interesting that of those 84 times, only five, five of the 84 are found in the Gospels. In other words, all of Matthew, all of Mark, all of Luke, all of John... Uh, page after page of the Gospels has only five of those occasions. Now, how do we explain that? Well, uh, probably because that hope is so future-oriented. As you uh, see the, the ministry, the life of Christ, the death of Christ on the cross, all of those establishes that hope and looks to the future and the, the good things that we have through what uh, happened in the Gospels. And uh, then after that that was accomplished in the Gospels happened, now then it's constantly through the Bible, especially uh, in the letters, where you have hope, 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 as we'll see as we look at specific uh, passages. The word hope is sometimes used of just ordinary human ex expectations. For instance, in Acts chapter 16, verse 19, there was a hope of, of profit. Uh, this, uh, of course, was in the city of Philippi, and uh, uh, Paul and, and Silas caused some trouble for some, some men that were uh, gaining advantage, profit, by 
uh, this woman, this young woman that uh, uh, had an evil spirit, was able to predict things and, and uh, a, a number of things like that. And uh, they, they hoped for the prophet that would come for her. So there's nothing spiritual about that. Later on in Acts 27, 20, there was, uh, uh, there was a time out on the high seas when uh, Paul was with the whole group of people, almost 300, out on the high seas in the midst of the storm, and uh, they were hoping uh, that they would be saved from uh, that uh, uh, storm and the destruction uh, on board that ship. Uh, in chapter 24, verse 26, again in the book of Acts, uh, there was a, an official, a, a governor, who uh, had hope, and it's the same word that we'll find later on in, in our Christian hope, but used obviously in a different way, a hope of a bribe. He thought if he kept Paul in prison, the Christian friends would gather enough money to have him released. So uh, he wanted a bribe to take care of, of that. So it's used in rather ordinary ways, uh, and uh, we will be looking at the context of how it's used in these passages to see the gra grandeur of the Christian hope. Christian hope is a marvelous virtue and makes the Christian optimistic, positive, and expectant. In other words, of all the people of our world, we as Christians ought to be hopeful because of our hope. We ought to be positive and and thinking optimistically because we have that Christian hope out there that transcends anything this life has to offer. And we need to live like that and have those kind of attitudes that are uh, upbuilding and, and lifting and, and uh, soaring for, uh, for us in, in spirit. So uh, it is a great, great reason for confidence and for, for joy, as we'll talk about in, in a few moments. It is truly tragic that mankind can be without hope. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 has Paul using this expression, without hope and without God in this present world. Now you think about a dreary, pointless life. To be without hope and without God in this world. But I want to tell you, below the surface, we are dealing, each one of us, with people that are just like that. They, they do not know the Bible. They do not know the promises of God in the Scripture. And they do not have the kind of hope that we are discussing tonight. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 has Paul saying, We don't grieve as others who have no hope. What a tragedy to just think this is it and there's nothing to expect good beyond this life. The New Testament has with hope a, a tremendous, powerful future thrust. It's based in eternity, not in some shallow, superficial view of this worldly project, uh, uh, prospects. There's no earthly utopia or, or unique, perfect place on this earth that, that should ever distract us from the Christian hope that's revealed in Scripture. At the end of the last century, there were some religious folks uh, in the name of Christianity that talked a lot about what they called the social gospel. And it was essentially uh, the idea that we can have uh, heaven on earth that we can uh, uh, do things with education and attacking poverty and ignorance, and, and we can just build on this earth with the right kind of, of tools, uh, just a, a wonderful heaven on earth for people. And uh, there was this incredible positive attitude. Well, guess what happened? World War I. And it devastated the social gospel. And uh, there is still that uh, bit of that around where people think we can have that Christian hope on earth. Well, the ultimate hope that we have as a people of God is not centered in this world, but in the next. What can we affirm about our Christian hope? Let me suggest three things to you. First of all, let's talk about the reasons for our Christian hope. 
and I'm taking these obviously directly out of the text. The hope of salvation is one of the reasons that we can have our Christian hope. We can be saved. We can be right with God. We can be lost in sin. We can have the devastation of eternal damnation removed from our future. Now that brings hope. Romans chapter 8 verses 24 and 25 says, we are saved in hope or we're saved by hope in an unseen hope. In other words, it makes the point that something that's seen is not really hope, but uh, uh, hope is an unseen reality. And surely it is. And we Uh, He makes the point, we are eagerly waiting for that, looking forward to that that hope of salvation. Secondly, and and this is in a sense talking about it in another way, uh, or turning the the facets of it, but there is the hope of eternal life, life that will never end, life that can be enjoyed forever and ever. And this is only, this life here, only a prelude or a beginning of life, if you will. Titus chapter 1 verse 2 makes this point, in hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie has promised. So he's promised us eternal life, never ending, everlasting life. Well, again, what a wonderful way of looking at Christian hope. Then you have the hope of the second coming. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 has uh, Paul saying, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. The Lord will appear someday in the heavens and in this old world as we know it. And there is hope in that. There is a future in that, an everlasting confidence in that uh, reality taking place. And then there is, again, another way of saying this, the hope of heaven, the hope of being with God in an inexpressible, in, impossible to truly describe with human language heaven. Colossians chapter 1 verse 5, the hope which is laid up for you in heaven of which you heard in the gospel of the good news. The hope of heaven. And again, it's beyond this life, that heaven that we're talking about. It's that future reward, that future blessing that comes to those that are faithful and give their lives to the Lord in this life. Number two, there are certain resources that are a part of our Christian hope from Scripture. First of all, our experiences. We have certain things happening to us. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4 explain these. And it makes the point that we experience tribulation or trials or troubles. Well, what do those do for us? Do we throw in the towel? Do we give up? Do we walk away in frustration and anxiety and maybe anger, agony, whatever? No. The tribulation brings perseverance. Perseverance meaning we can persist. We can, we can stay with it. We won't give up. We'll, we'll, we'll stay the course, if you will. And as we do that, ultimately character becomes a part of our nature. We are people of character, of integrity, of a rounded maturity, of someone that truly is a noble kind of individual. Oh, we may not be famous in, uh, in, in the world sense, but we can have that character, that quality of, of life that uh, uh, has true meaning. And then ultimately, what does all that come to? The last step is hope. We started with tribulation, with troubles, but they move through a process winding through so that we ultimately have, by our experiences, Christian hope. Secondly, a resource is Scripture. Should we be surprised at that? Romans chapter 15, verse 4. These things, uh, Paul said, uh, written of the past, uh, were written that we might have hope. We study the Scriptures, we study them in detail and with confidence because we believe through them we have hope. Again, when people do not read their Bibles, when they do not know what's in their Bibles, how can they have the hope that we're talking about tonight? But So we go to the Scripture and we read uh, from those inspired